How Big is a Foot? Written and illustrated by Rolf Myler. Once upon a time, there lived a king and his wife, the queen. They were a happy couple, for they had everything in the world. However, when the queen's birthday came near, the king had a problem. What could he give to someone who had everything? The king thought, and he thought, and he thought, until suddenly he had an idea. He would give the queen a bed. The queen didn't have a bed because at the time, beds had not been invented. So even someone who had everything did not have a bed. The king called his prime minister and asked him to please have a bed made. The prime minister called the chief carpenter and asked him to please have a bed made. The chief carpenter called the apprentice and told him to make a bed. How big is a bed? asked the apprentice, who didn't know, because at the time nobody had ever seen a bed. How big is a bed? the carpenter asked the Prime Minister. A good question, said the Prime Minister, and he asked the king, How big is a bed? The king thought, and he thought, and he thought, until suddenly he had an idea. The bed must be big enough to fit the queen. The king called the queen and told her to put on her new pajamas and told her to lie on the floor. The king took off his shoes and with his big feet walked carefully around the queen. He counted that the bed must be three feet wide and six feet long to be big enough to fit the queen, including the crown, which the queen sometimes likes to wear to sleep. The king said thank you to the queen and told the prime minister who told the chief carpenter, who told the apprentice, the bed must be three feet wide and six feet long to be big enough to fit the queen, including the crown, which she sometimes liked to wear to sleep. The apprentice said, thank you. And he took off his shoes and with his little foot, he measured three feet wide and six feet long and made a bed to fit the queen. When the king saw the bed, he thought it was beautiful and he could not wait for the queen's birthday. Instead, he called the queen at once and told her to put on her new pajamas. Then he brought out the bed and told the queen to try it. But the bed was much too small for the queen. The king was so angry that he immediately called the prime minister, who called the chief carpenter, who called the jailer, who threw the apprentice into jail. The apprentice was unhappy. Why was the bed too small for the queen? He thought, and he thought, and he thought, until suddenly he had an idea. A bed that was three king's feet wide and six king's feet long was naturally bigger than a bed that was three apprentice feet wide and six apprentice feet long. I can make a bed to fit the queen. If I know the size of the king's foot, he cried. 
He explained this to the jailer. Who explained it to the chief carpenter? Who explained it to the prime minister? Who explained it to the king? Who was much too busy to go to the jail? Instead, the king took off one shoe and called a famous sculptor. The sculptor made an exact marble copy of the king's foot. This was sent to the jail. The apprentice took the marble copy of the king's foot and with it he measured three feet wide and six feet long and built a bed to fit the queen. The bed was ready just in time for the queen's birthday. The king called the queen and told her to put on her new pajamas. Then he brought out the new bed and told the queen to try it. The queen got into bed and the bed fit the queen perfectly, including the crown, which she sometimes liked to wear to sleep. It was, without a doubt, the nicest gift that the queen had ever received. The king was very happy. He immediately called the apprentice from jail and made him a royal prince. He ordered a big parade and all the people came out to cheer the little apprentice prince. And forever after, anyone who wanted to measure anything used a copy of the king's foot. And when someone said, my bed is six feet long and three feet wide, everyone knew exactly how big it was. The end. I hope you enjoyed how big is a foot as much as I did. So let me ask you a question. Why do we need a standard unit of measurement? Well, look at the picture that I've added in to illustrate what happened in the story, how big is a foot? As you can see, I have two examples, a small foot, probably a child's foot, and a larger adult foot. But as you can see, feet come in many sizes. So what do we mean when we say, how big is a foot? To help us, I'm gonna take you through a little virtual classroom where we're gonna measure some flowers, one in particular. Oh, but look, <laughs> we have a little bee in our garden. Don't worry, he's not gonna bother us. So let me ask you a question. How long are four paper clips? You think this might be an easy question to answer, but we'll see it, it's a little more challenging. Here I have a paper clip. And so I'm going to line up four paper clips to find out how long they are. So if I bring out a line, I can see that this is how long four paper clips are. But what if I change and use a different paper clip? A different paper clip, you may be asking. What if I use this paper clip? As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Paper clips come in many different sizes. So now I'm going to use the shorter, smaller paper clip and line up four. Let's see how long it is this time. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, when I use four smaller paper clips, I get a shorter line. So even if we are measuring something with paper clips, can we say it is four paper clips long? We have to define or identify how long our paper clip is to be able to measure and say, this line is four paper clips long. I wanna introduce you to two friends of mine, Jane and Philip. Jane and Philip are going to help us explore length a little bit more. Jane is going to try to measure a flower using the large paper clip. And Philip is going to measure the same flower 
using a shorter paper clip. Let's see what happens when we go back to our garden. We are going to measure the yellow flower on the left and see how tall it is using our paper clips. Maybe this will give a better understanding of why we have to identify the tool that we're measuring with and know exactly how long it is. I think Jane's up first. Jane is going to pick the larger paper clip and measure that yellow flower. Let's see how tall it is. One, two, three, four. It's about four paper clips tall. Remember Philip? He was going to use the shorter paper clip. Let's see how tall the same flower is using the shorter paper clip. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if they were going to describe how tall the yellow flower is, Jane would say that it is four paper clips tall, and Philip would say that it is six paper clips tall. But really, do we know how tall the flower is? No, we need to have a better tool to measure our flowers. I want to introduce you to one of the standard units of measurement that we use here in the United States. It's called the foot. This is actually a ruler you may have used in your classroom or around the house with your parents or guardian. So exactly what is a foot? This is kind of where we started in our story. We need to know just how long a foot is. Well, a foot is made up of inches. There are 12 inches in one foot. Let me show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If you were to use a ruler that measured inches, you would be able to explain exactly how long or tall an object is and everybody would be on the same page when it comes to understanding the measurement. If this would have been in our book, our story earlier, the queen would have got the bed right the first time. I think we're up for a challenge. Why don't you come with me and we'll measure a few objects. The first one that we're going to try is our blue crayon. So to be able to measure, you need an object, the blue crayon to measure, and you need a ruler. This is just a part of a ruler. We call this a six inch ruler, but that'll be just what we need to measure this crayon. We place the ruler on a flat surface and we move the crayon so that it lines up with the end of the ruler. That is very important. If you don't start at the end of the ruler at the zero mark, you won't be able to measure properly. So what do y'all think? How long is that blue crayon? Excellent. That blue crayon is three inches long. I think we're up to measuring a few more objects. This is an activity from LengthyLacesEducation.com and what we're doing is we are measuring the length of different colored laces. So you see we have a red lace that we're going to measure. I'm going to move the ruler for you and I'm going to give you a chance to see if you can figure out how long that red lace is. Let's give it a try. Okay, I've moved the ruler. Can you see from end to end just how long that red lace is? Perfect, it is 12 inches long. Let's do another one. Now we have a yellow lace. Let me move the ruler. Can you figure out how long the yellow lace is? Hmm, 
If you're looking carefully, you can see it's a little longer than six, but not as long as seven. There's some marks in between where we can divide an inch into smaller equal parts. As you can see, this yellow lace falls halfway between the six and the seven. So what do you think we could say about the length of this lace? How long is it? If you said six and a half inches, you're doing great. Let's measure a few more. Oh, now we have a green lace. Let's see how long that green lace is. Excellent. That green lace is nine inches long. Oh, I think this is going to be our last one. Yep, it's our purple lace. Let's see how long our purple lace is. Remember, we have to line up our object at the start of the ruler where the zero is. And what was your guess for this one? Perfect, 11 inches. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson today and maybe you can find a ruler and measure some objects around your house.